This video tutorial from Exocot demonstrates how you can quickly achieve a full denture design. To start, run the Dental DB application. Now select a client, Dentist, for this project in the drop-down list. Enter the name of the patient or case. Use a comma to separate surname and first name. Select the technician the same way as you select the client. Note, the technician field is not mandatory. Select the numbered tooth you want to design. Select full denture as restoration type. Then choose PMMA as desired material. Make sure you have aesthetic plate scan activated. Finish the restoration definition by clicking the OK button. Hold Shift and click left mouse on the numbered tooth at the opposite end of the arch to copy this restoration type to the entire tooth bow. With Control and left mouse button, you can copy it to a numbered tooth in the lower jaw. With Shift, you can copy it to the entire jaw. Make sure you have correctly chosen two stone models in occlusion. Certainly you may use an articulator for the scan mode. Then click the Save button to continue. Continue by clicking the Action icon Scan to start the scan. This will be covered in a separate video. Therefore, we will proceed using one of our demo samples. Click on the Load button. At the top of the Dental DB window, choose the demo sample called Full Denture. And then click on the Load button. Now click on the Design icon to start the CAD application. The first step in the main wizard is the model analysis. Tip: You may use the arrows to quickly change the view. The model analysis is the secondary wizard within the main wizard. The work steps of the analysis are presented in a vertical list. This allows you to freely move between the different steps. Note, only the activated dark colored step icons can be clicked. All other step icons require a previous action to become accessible and appear highlighted. However, the most simple way is to follow the wizard by clicking the next button. The model analysis is a very intuitive tool. You just need to follow the instructions explained by a preview picture. In the first step of the analysis wizard, you need to define the occlusal plane. This can be done with the three-point definition method or by using the articulator plane. In this tutorial, we will only demonstrate the definition with three points. Set the first point on the patient's left side, the second point on the patient's right side, and the third point in the center of the arch. If you have erroneously clicked an incorrect position, you can drag the point with the left mouse to the correct position. Click the Apply button to create the plane. The sliders can be used to change the height of the plane by defining a distance to each point. After each modification, you must click the Apply button to recompute the plane. When unlocking the distances, each distance can be set individually which leads to an inclination of the plane. To undo all, set all values to zero. Click OK to finish that step. Click on the Next button or press Enter to proceed to the next step. If you desire to go back, click on the Back button or press the backspace key. As shown in the Analysis Wizard preview, you will be prompted to mark the incisal papilla by drawing a line around it. Draw the line with at least three points. In most cases, it is preferred that you add a fourth point, as shown in this video. 
Hold the left mouse button to drag the points. Now move the blue point exactly into the center of the papilla. This point will be used to position the median plane. Then proceed to the next step. Draw a line around each maxillary tuberosity. Don't hesitate to encircle with a wide range. It is not important to which side of the arch you start drawing. Proceed to the next step. Hold the left mouse button to drag the red plane in order to define the position of the rough median plane. Hold control and left mouse button to rotate the plane. Hold left mouse on the red point to move the center of rotation. Click auto detect to get back to the default position. Proceed to the next step. To define the plane of the labial surface limit, it might be helpful to highlight the aesthetic plate scan in the Show Hide window. Hold the left mouse button to drag the plane. Proceed to the next step. Mark the distal areas of the canines. Note, when adding points, the side you started with will always be detected automatically. Before proceeding to the next step, you may enter a patient's nose width measurement, if that information has been provided. Define the first premolar positions by clicking on the appropriate areas. Proceed to the next step. Just click on the pterogomandibular folds and proceed to the next step. Click on the buccal frenums to place a point. Then proceed to the next step. Define the first premolar positions by clicking in the appropriate area. Then proceed to the next step. Click on the lingual frenum, then proceed to the next step. Draw a line around the retromolar pads. Don't hesitate to encircle with a wide range. In this step as well, it is not important on which side you start drawing. Proceed to the next step. This step requires the same procedure as for the maxillary rough median plane. Hold the left mouse button to drag the red plane in order to define the position of the rough median plane. Hold control and left mouse button to rotate the plane. The center of rotation may also be changed. Click Auto Detect if you desire to restore the default position or proceed to the next step. In this step, you will be prompted to move the red point exactly into the ridge midline. Proceed to the next step. Now define the lower jaw labial surface limit. Here again, it might be helpful to highlight the aesthetic plate scan. Hold the left mouse button to drag the plane or hold control to rotate it. When you are done, proceed to the next step. In this step, you may correct the detected alveolar ridge line. Hold the left mouse button to drag the points to the correct position. Feel free to add additional points with the left mouse button. 
points can be deleted using both mouse buttons. Hold the left mouse button while clicking the right mouse button. Try to place this line exactly in the middle of the alveolar ridge. Proceed to the next step. If necessary, manually correct the automatically detected molar positions. By default, these are placed on the deepest region of the alveolar ridge. They might be adapted manually, and they should be placed more or less symmetrical on both sides. Proceed to the next step. In this step, the distal border lines of the last molars will be defined. Generally, these are located 22.5 degrees from the intersecting line with the alveolar ridge line at the molar position. Of course, the border lines points may be adopted manually. If you have any doubts, use Auto Detect to get back to the default position. This is an important step for the inclination of the curve of speed. Proceed to the next step. In this step, you may correct the detective alveolar ridge line for the upper arch. Hold the left mouse button to drag the points to the correct positions or add points if required. Again, try to place the line exactly in the middle of the alveolar ridge. The molar positions have been projected from the lower jaw and should be corrected in the same manner as you did for the lower jaw. Again, try to place them more or less symmetrical on both sides. Proceed to the next step. This procedure will yield the result of the analysis for the upper arch. You may verify inner and outer correction areas marked by the blue and green lines. And if required, you may go back and make changes to the following steps. The first premolar position represented by the green dots. The pterogomandibular folds marked by the red dots. The red static line goes through the center of the tuberosities, marked in orange. If a change is required, you have to go back and redefine the maxillary tuberosity. Click Next to verify the lower jaw analysis. The inner and outer correction line marked in green and blue, as well as the red static line, can be changed in the following steps. The first premolar position, represented by the green dots. The maxillary tuberosities, marked by the orange line. Click on the Next button to proceed to the last step and define the final setup lines. The red lines represent the final setup lines. The posterior teeth will be placed exactly on these lines. The final setup lines can be moved within the green-blue marked common correction areas. The common correction areas mark the zone which is available in both jaws. The purpose of this very important step is to define the perfect position for the setup of posterior teeth within upper and lower jaw. This is why it should be verified alternately with upper and lower jaw. It might be very useful to switch between both jaws in the show hide window. Once the posteriors have been set up corresponding to the static line, they can still be moved within the green-blue range. Note, in very difficult cases, the analysis limit range can even be ignored for the tooth placement. Since this was the final step, you can click on OK in the Analysis Wizard and proceed in the Main Wizard. Click on the Next button to proceed to the next step in the Main Wizard. The denture tooth placement starts with the selection of the tooth sets. The automatic suggestion is a result of the previous analysis. You have the option to change the tooth sets. The generic demo library we provide includes three different sizes. A change in the size of the posterior teeth will always be applied to both arches. For the anterior teeth, you may choose different sizes for the upper and lower arches. If you change the anterior teeth for the upper arch, the same size will be applied to the anterior lower jaw. Changing the lower jaw tooth size will only apply to the lower jaw. Click Auto Select if you desire to get back to the default selection. Start by placing the posteriors. There are three options for the placement of the last molars. First, by default, they will only be placed if possible. Second, 
Choose Always to force the software to place them. Click again on Place Posteriors to apply the change. The third option would be to never place them. Since there is not enough space in this case to place the last molars, we choose to let the software decide. Once the posterior tooth set has been chosen, you may place the anteriors. To verify the tooth set selection, check to see if the tooth size and form, if available, match the size and form of the patient's jaws. The placement of the tooth bows and individual teeth can be adjusted in the next step. You might use the aesthetic plate scan and the analysis to verify the automatic tooth placement and size selection. For the individual tooth placement, you might hide these visual tools in the Show Hide window. Now the teeth can be moved and rotated as in ExoCAD's known tooth placement interface. As usual, movements can be restricted in certain directions. Tooth scaling is not possible. Hold the left mouse button to drag a tooth. The value of the intersection's depths to the adjacents and antagonist will be displayed next to the contact area. The color scale goes from blue to magenta. Blue and green is okay, while red and magenta are not okay. Note, intersections cannot be adapted automatically, so later on you will have to manually grind them away on the actual teeth. Hold the left mouse button and control to rotate the tooth. The posteriors can only be moved and rotated as an entire block. And the movements are restricted to confine the teeth within the analysis limits. To enable unrestricted movements, uncheck Keep Posteriors in Analysis Limits. This allows you to freely move the posterior blocks. The full denture module comes with a completely new tooth placement feature. It is called Chain Mode. The Chain Mode simplifies the tooth placement to an extreme degree. We recommend to use the Chain Mode instead of the individual tooth placement, as intersections with adjacents will now be handled automatically. Hold the left mouse button to move and adjust the complete tooth bow in a chain. Posterior placement is still limited unless you uncheck this feature in the Individual Tooth Placement tab. Hold the left mouse button and control to rotate the posterior blocks. The anteriors will be moved in a chain. You may fix individual teeth at their current position by clicking the green dot to red. This will disable each movement for the deactivated teeth. By default, the teeth always stay in contact unless you deactivate this mode. If it is deactivated, you may create a diastema between teeth. If you activate this mode again, contact points will be re-established at the next movement. You may even move or rotate a single anterior tooth without affecting the complete chain. Activate the Move Free mode to perform fine tweaking on individual teeth. Note, upper and lower posteriors will always stick together. The position of upper and lower anteriors needs to be adjusted manually. Once we have defined the upper anterior's position, we do the same on the lower jaw. Deactivate the Move Free mode and adjust the lower anterior tooth bow to the upper tooth bow. Activate the Move Free mode again to finalize the lower anterior setup.
click on Solve Antagonist Intersections to perform an automatic tooth adjustment, which eliminates potential antagonist intersections. Click on the Next button to proceed to the next step. This part of the construction allows you to design the inside of the denture base and affects the fit of the denture. The parameters involved are similar to those used by the Bite Splint module. The most important task is to define the insertion direction. Rotate the view so that you look into the preparation from the desired insertion direction. While rotating, undercuts are marked in red. Then click Set Insertion Direction from View and click on Apply to generate the base bottom. The default settings allow undercuts of 0.1 millimeters. The depth of the undercuts will be displayed corresponding to the known color scale. Use freeforming if you desire to manually block out certain areas. For instance, you may block out the labial frenum or the incisal papilla. When you're done, click on the Next button to proceed to the lower jaw. Again, define the insertion direction and click on Apply. It's exactly the same procedure as for the upper arch. Click on the Next button to proceed. This is now the first step of the denture base design and the wizard will prompt you to draw the denture margin line. It is exactly the same margin draw mode as known from crowns and copings. Add as many points as you require to design the border of your denture base. You may decide if you want to set the margin line on the outer ridge of your model as shown in this video or, if you prefer, you may define the final border of the base. This way, you may exclude the frenums from being covered by the denture. Simply finish the drawing with a double click, or use the Accept Drawing Changes button. Once the drawing has been finished, you may still adjust the line by moving, adding, or deleting points. Hold the left mouse button on a point to drag. Click on the orange line to add a point or hold the left mouse button while clicking the right mouse button to delete a point. When you are done, you may change to the properties of the denture base. In these tabs, you may set the parameters for the base thickness. Now click on the Next button to start creating the denture base. Once the base has been created, you may still change the settings and reapply. If it's fine, proceed to the lower jaw denture base. Instead of drawing the denture margin as we have done for the upper arch, you should also try the automatic detection. Compared to the margin line detection of crowns and bridges with one point, you should add at least six to eight points. It's important to set the first two points in the rear section of the jaw as it will be shown here now. Once you've added the fourth point, the calculation automatically starts, but interrupts if you continue to add points. Restart the calculation by clicking on the Start button when you have placed six to eight points. Certainly, you may change the draw mode if adjustments are required. Just as for the upper arch, the properties for the lower jaw may be changed as well. The required blank height for the base will be displayed by the green arrows. Click on the Next button to proceed to the next step. 
The denture freeforming tool differs slightly from the known crown and bridge freeforming tool. The anatomical freeform mode just provides two different options. The default denture base parts option allows you to move smaller parts of the denture base, whereas the entire denture base allows you to move major areas. Choose the entire base parts option to adjust the gingiva to the cervical margin of the teeth and to define the desired gingiva border thickness. It is up to you how long the teeth will appear. Repeat the same procedure for the lower jaw. Click on Denture Base Parts to adjust the interdental papilla gingiva areas. Now click on the Free tab to open the virtual wax knife. This tool behaves exactly the same as the known freeforming mode, where you may add, remove, or smooth material with different brush types adjustable in size and strength. This tool can be used for the finishing touches. It may also help you to make the digital gingiva look realistic or lifelike by mimicking the roots of the teeth and the gingival pockets. Choose the brush type, point of knife, in the medium size to design the roots. With a little practice, you will achieve very realistic results. Increase the brush size to create a concave appearance at the peripheral areas. You can even imitate the labial frenulums.
Use Smooth Flatten to finalize the design. Again, use the anatomical free-forming mode to restore the minimum thickness on thin areas. Use the anatomical free-forming mode for adjustments on the palatal area. and the same for the lower jaw. Click on the Next button to proceed to the last step. In this step, the tooth will be adapted to the jaw and the denture base will be adapted to the teeth and the jaw. The settings in this step should be adjusted and synchronized in relation to the manufacturing process. Click on Apply to create and adapt the denture base for the upper arch. Click on the Next button to create the denture base for the lower jaw. Click on the Next button to finish the denture restoration.
Choose I'm done and click on the Finish button to save and export the restoration. Thank you for watching this video.